Hello there, and welcome to the second instalment in my Kenya travel vlog series. Today I'll be visiting the Elephant Orphanage, Giraffe Centre, and then catching a flight down to Mombasa. And now time to see some elephants. So the gates open at 11am and when they do, everyone starts walking with speed. To God, this place is ethical. Otherwise, I'm gonna feel like a scumbag. I feel like it will be because it's like open for an hour. It's an orphanage. So surely. Orphanage does, I mean, Jack. Technically. No, but the fact that it's open that for is an a hour good thing. Not like, yeah. Where do we stand? Um, should we do this side? Okay. Even though I feel like they're gonna go in the middle, oh, but it's too late. Yeah. At the elephant orphanage, waiting to see some <coughs> elephants. Surprisingly, the first animal we saw at the orphanage was a baby rhino. I didn't even know they had rhinos there. You can only access the elephant orphanage if you've also paid the national park gate fees. So we went here after our safari. The elephant orphanage is only open from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day, which means it's only a one hour slot. This means that this place is busy, so make sure you book in advance as you cannot pay on the day. So after the rhino went away, the elephants came out to play and they were being fed by their handlers. To my knowledge, this place is quite ethical. The elephants seem quite happy. They don't encourage people to touch the elephants or feed them, and you're also unable to bathe with the elephants. So the elephants, we are not feeding them on an elephant's milk. Reasons. We cannot go into the wild, milk a wild elephant. So the elephants come out in two separate groups for feeding time, and this was the first batch. The time to handle them. They're all born of different personalities, different characters. If they all come together, 21 of them, it will be a very difficult <laughs> hassle for the keepers to control them. So this orphanage rescues baby elephants only, some as young as two days old. They try their best to reunite the elephants with their families. This could be by tracking down their mothers and seeing if they'll be able to rejoin the pack. This is a non-profit organisation run entirely on donations. After my terrible experience with elephants in Thailand, I did a lot of research on this place and it does seem to be ethical and is featured on a lot of responsible tourism websites. During your visit, one of the handlers will explain a little bit of a history about the elephants. For instance, one of the elephants was found in a dry water hole. <laughs> we then got to watch some of the elephants have a bite to eat. Oh, this was after she was identified. <laughs> the handler explained that one of the other elephants was separated from their families by humans, and they could tell this because they had cuts on their back. After the first batch of elephants had had something to eat and played around a bit, they went back into the bushes and out came the second batch of elephants. Some nice eyelashes. Very <laughs> long. So yes, they will remember. The Next, we had an opportunity to ask the handlers any questions we had about the elephants. Um, what is the youngest elephant you've ever gotten? We have ever received as young as a newly elephant. Two days old. The elephants know when it's feeding time, so you can see them running to join us in the background. <laughs> Just a kind reminder. If you scream, if you shout, if you talk on high tone, that will attract the elephants. When you shout, when you scream, they become more excited. Because <laughs> all the time she sees a strange person, and if you make lots of noise close to her, she will not hesitate to smack you with her trunk. She is so easy to react on to that. Her name is the Weka. I absolutely love this experience, so I definitely recommend it if you are in Nairobi. 
It was so nice to see the elephants being treated nicely and having a great time. Before heading into the giraffe centre, we stopped off for a spot of Kenyan lunch. This is a mixture of cabbage with some spinach, some chicken and some beef. Wow! So you Can we eat it all? Like, yeah. <laughs> I tried Fanta Passion for the first time in Kenya and it soon became my favourite drink. Oh, I'm all about you, my hand. It's normal here, yeah. The white, this one is ugali. Okay, so ugali. Ugali, rice. Rice. Veggies or yeah. mboga boga in oh, Swahili. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Pupu with chicken. Yeah. Uh, this one I don't know, she explained, but I've never seen that one before. And then chapati. Thank you. So, we've stopped off for some local lunch. We've got some rice. Do some vegetables. It's called boga boga or something. Do some. I'll just This I think is called ngazi or ngali. It looks like yam. Yeah, it does look like yam. I think it's made with corn starch or tomatoes or something like that. Nice. And then meat. This cost twenty three thousand dollars, <laughs> American dollars. <laughs> yeah, just make sure it's like United States. More like a theme park. Yeah, man. Yeah, Everybody, park come park. and take your kids. <laughs> Need a photographer. Giraffe centre. About to go see some giraffes. <laughs> uh, which way do we go? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> But <laughs> they're on a diet. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> one one, one show. What's in there? They look like baby giraffes, though. Okay. Alright, guys, I'm about to feed them. Yeah. Feed a giraffe? Take two. That's feed a giraffe. There are any other ones? Uh, don't get head-butted. Yeah, with okay. your long nails. <laughs> Better not eat my nails. Oh look, there's one there. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little bit closer. <laughs> you might have seen the viral giraffe manner all over Instagram. So that costs actual thousands of pounds, whereas this is only twenty dollars. You can actually see it between the bushes over there and it's the same giraffes that they use at both of these venues, it's just one costs a fraction of the price. The giraffe centre was very crowded though and this is literally the only educational information I found out about the giraffes. So it's more for a photo opportunity than learning about the animals which is a bit of a shame. On our way back to our hotel, we drove past Kaibira, which is the largest slum in Africa and the second or third largest slum in the world. Like many other countries in the world, there's a clear divide between the rich and the poor. Later that evening, we left Nairobi and flew to Mombasa. Our flight literally got cancelled and rescheduled about four times. Thank you, Kenya Airways. So we just landed in Mombasa and we're getting the ferry across some kind of river to Diani Beach. Just 
So the entrance to this hotel looked very grand, but when you see the rooms, my gosh. <sighs> my first issue with this hotel is that it's advertised as wheelchair accessible and there is no lift, but so many stairs. It's just so misleading. I look a bit raggedy. <laughs> we arrived in Kenya, Nairobi, at about half past 12 yesterday morning. Got to our hotel about two and our safari started at 5.30. So I had a little bit of sleep, whatever, I was tired. Went on safari, it was really nice. Seen loads of animals, rhinos, hippos, loads of giraffe, lions, all of that. It was really cool. Then went to the elephant orphanage, got to stroke some elephants and, well, we didn't really interact with them because it was an ethical place, which was nice, but we got to see them being fed and whatever and roaming around and then went to Giraffe Centre. That was all cool. Okay, beautiful day in Nairobi. Very, very nice, very sweet day. And then, so we left Nairobi, got a plane to Mombasa, we're thinking, yeah, we're going to the beach, whatever. I come and see this hotel. What? Come and see this hotel. Like, you know, it's not even that bad. Like, when you enter the entrance, it's all beautiful, it looks fancy, whatever. It's the room, the room is so basic. And the bathroom is actually dirty, and it wasn't even cheap. I don't even want to tell you how much I paid for this, because it's embarrassing. It wasn't even a cheap room. <laughs> But the place is just, it's just lackluster and it's like, it's just not, it's kind of nasty if I'm being totally honest with you. Like we spoke to the reception staff. I looked at about five different rooms to pick a new one because <laughs> there was just problems with all of these rooms. And I don't understand how this can be classified as a beachfront resort. I think at the time when we booked it, it was four stars. So you'd expect, you know, some kind of four star service, but it's, it's, it's awful. Is, is actually awful. Like, I can, I, I backpack, so I can do basic. This isn't even basic, it's just nasty. So I'm quite disappointed. So hopefully in the morning, I'm gonna complain and get a new room or something because I'm not happy. So yeah, good night guys. You can see from the architecture that this hotel has so much potential and I'm sure in its heyday, it was a very nice place to stay. I've never said this before, but don't come here. It's actually disgusting. As always, if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I hit 1k subscribers this week, so thank you to everyone who supports my channel and watches all my videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do and like this video to stay up to date with more Kenya vlogs.